Hello, welcome back to the physics teacher, Mr. Fernando. I will be showing you another example with the work kinetic energy theorem. So in this question here, we have a 2,100 kilogram car. It's starting from rest and it is accelerating at 2.6 meters per second squared for four seconds. Assume that the force acting to accelerate the car is in the same direction as its motion. How much work has the car done? All right, so this is a pretty easy question. If you think about it, we have a car, it starts from rest, and it begins to move. In other words, it accelerates, and it accelerates for a period of four seconds. So how much energy was required in order to make this car move with this much acceleration for that duration of time? So with these kind of questions, like I mentioned before, a good strategy is to always draw your situation, but always need to identify the initial conditions and your final conditions. So you want to draw the car initially. Whoops, let me draw that better. And you want to draw your car at its final conditions. All right, so that's a good strategy with the energy unit because you're always looking at what, the, what are the energy changes taking place. So we have initial, and final. So we are assuming that we're on a horizontal surface and since it is the force is making this car accelerate in the same direction, let's just make it as simple as possible and assume it is to the right. So that displacement is taking place to the right. So the main equation that we're going to work with is the work kinetic energy theorem which is the work done by the net force is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. This formula is really helpful because we don't even need to know what are the forces acting on the car. All we really need to know is what is the change in energy, specifically kinetic energy, which depends on the initial velocity and the final velocity. So the initial velocity Oh, the car starting from rest, so if it starts from rest, the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity, we don't know, so we're going to leave it as an unknown. So put a question mark, right? Initial velocity, final velocity, and the car, it is accelerating, so the direction of acceleration, we're assuming is to the right, because it is speeding up in that direction, with 2.6 meters per second squared. Good. And they also gave us the mass of the car, so we could label that as M equals to 2,100 kilograms. Good. So using the work kinetic energy theorem, we don't need to know the forces, all we really need to know is the change in velocities and the mass of the object. So we can rewrite this equation as work equals to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. And we're going to use the formulas for kinetic energy. Recall, kinetic energy is just a half mv squared. So for the final conditions, we can replace this as a half and the final square minus a half and the initial square. And that will give us the work done, which is what the question was asking us, right? How much work has the car done? Well, that depends on how much its kinetic energy has changed. In this case, we have the initial velocity to be zero. So that's gonna simplify our calculation by a lot because if the initial velocity is zero, this whole term goes to zero so the work done is just equal to a half m v final square hmm so we're looking for work we know the mass but we don't have the final velocity whenever we're stuck again we're never really stuck because now we're in unit three we have unit two which are the forces to rely on but in this case, we're missing the final velocity, so we're going to think back to kinematics. So let's recall the kinematics equations. So from kinematics, we want to pick one of the equations, 
specifically one that relies on the time because they don't give us a displacement. So we want an equation that had to do with time. So there's two possible candidates here. Delta D equals to V initial delta T plus a half A delta T squared. Okay, but we don't know the displacement, so we don't know, oh, we know the rest, but the initial velocity is zero. Okay, so here we could solve for delta D. Ah, but you know what? There's an easier equation we can use, right? Because the equation to calculate the final velocity is just equal to the initial velocity plus A delta T. So if we use this equation, again, we could have used the previous one, but if we use the previous one, then we have to use another equation, which will make it more complicated. So easiest will be to choose the second one here. So the final velocity equals to the initial velocity plus acceleration times the change in time. In our case, the initial velocity was zero. So we can make this term go to zero and rewrite the equation as the final velocity equals to the acceleration times the change in time. And in this question, they gave us the acceleration and the change in time was four seconds. So let's substitute this new equation into the one that we got stuck previously. So we can find the work done in order to make this car accelerate with that much for that long. A delta T all squared. So now we have everything in our equations to be able to plug in the numbers. So let's do that to calculate the work. The mass was 2,100 kilograms. Make sure that you're working with kilograms, right? Your acceleration is 2.6. The time is four seconds. All of that will be squared. So I like to use a lot of brackets, so that way when I'm gonna use the calculator now, there's less chances to make a mistake. So let's calculate this. Okay, hopefully I did this correct. Uh, you could check and maybe make a comment if I made a mistake, so be sure to comment. Uh, you could also comment if you have any other questions about any of the work that we did today. So the work equals to 1,103568 joules. So just in four seconds, look how much energy was used up by the car. Because again, work is the transfer of energy. So 113,000 joules. That's a lot of energy being used up to make it go for four seconds. Imagine when you're driving for a whole day. Hmm. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to show you some more examples in the next video. So please hit subscribe. And that way you can learn some more physics with me, Mr. Fernando. See ya.